you know, one of the things I really enjoy about making YouTube videos is the interaction I have with my viewers. I try and answer every comment that a viewer makes, and I invite and get a lot of great comments and suggestions on things that I could do to improve, maybe something I've already tried on video, or something for a completely new. Well, recently, one of my viewers commented on my vegetable steamer stove, and if you are familiar with those, uh, you'll know it's simply just a vegetable steamer that you can pick up in any kitchen supply place that you use as a wood stove. And the comment was, um, could I combine a vegetable steamer with the cross members from the seed stove? So I gave it a try. It works out really well. Now, I apologize to my viewer who gave me that comment. Right now, I cannot remember your name. I wrote it down. I didn't bring it with me. But I rest assured it will be on the screen because credit is where credit is due. And if it wasn't for you, I don't know if eventually I would have come up with this or someone else might have suggested. But you were the first person to suggest it, so you deserve that credit. So that's what we're going to do today. Now I'm going to bring the camera a little in a little closer to show you how this works. And then we'll back out and I'll make my lunch using the seed stoves and the vegetable steamer. Okay, you may have noticed that I have my tarp set up behind me. Uh, when I came out this morning, the temperature was about minus 5, minus 6 degrees Celsius, which is actually a nice winter day considering it's the middle of December. But the wind brings it down to minus 15 to minus 17 wind chill. That's minus 17 Celsius wind chill. So quite bitter, at least uh, as cold as anything I've been out in this year. It, not as cold as it'll get, but uh, you know, when you're not used to it, it's, uh, it feels a little cold. So, okay, so let's get back to the vegetable steamer. So what I'll do is I'll give you a few close-ups of the vegetable steamer. I will set it up with the cross members on top. I have two vegetable steamers I want to demonstrate it with. And then of course we'll set it up and we'll get a fire going in it and uh, I'll boil up some water that I can make myself some lunch with. So I, as I mentioned, this is has its own standalone video. Actually, a couple of videos on how to use these vegetable steamers as wood stoves. And uh, I'll put links at the end of this video where you can go back and see them because I won't, don't want to spend too much time on it. But as you can see, these things, this is the way they store, if you know, if you buy them in the store. This one I mentioned has the folding legs on bottom. Uh, you just open them right up and you can open them all the way up as the leaves will open up like this. And you can use it like a small fire pit or you can close it up part way if you want to use it as more of a wood stove style. And I've also used this very successfully with wood pellets and it worked great as a windscreen for an alcohol stove. So yeah, it's, it's overall for what you pay for these things, they have a lot of advantages. Takes a little ingenuity and a little getting used to or a little bit of work to uh, learn how to use them properly. But uh, yeah, so they, they're just a great little wood stove for very little money. So let me show you how it works with the cross members. So I'm going to show you this with the cross members for the, the top part, the pot stand portion of the seed stove. And what the viewer had suggested is perfect. You'll notice that there are a variety of notches on the cross members. The, this is the pot stand portion and they're designed to fit on top different size cans or on top of the IKEA uh, hobo stove or that you know the utensil strainer but they'll fit on paint cans right down to soup cans and they'll fit on the vegetable steamer so it's a matter of selecting which one is the best one suited to you and then spreading it out lining it up and hopefully you can see that's locked in there really quite nicely all the way around and there we go. That's all there is to it, really. That is all there was to it. Now I've got a pot stand that sets up a little bit off the top of the vegetable steamer, allowing better airflow and the ability to feed wood in while the fire is burning and the pot is still on top. Now, okay, so that works out on this size vegetable steamer. What about something this size? This is a little tiny one that I had picked up and done some playing around with. I tried two things. So this one, uh, one of the legs was broken off, the little short little stubby legs were broken off when I got it. So I just removed the other two legs and thought I could come up with something a little bit better. I'll tell you what I did try that did not work out. 
and that is these are the bottom members for the siege stove and I thought to myself uh, these are designed to be pushed in through the metal of a base of a can or through the IKEA utensil strainer and create a pot stand or a base for that. Uh, let me see if I can try and push it in through the bottom of this. Uh, I couldn't get it to work properly. It just kept bending. Like this is very solid metal. It kept bending. I couldn't hammer it in easily enough. So I gave up on that. But what I discovered is if I set this base down so the sharp teeth are on the earth, then this will set on top and is quite solid. Now make sure it's level, of course. And then you can, with that on the earth, open this one up and you can do the same thing with the pot stands. It's just a different set of notches to line it up with. There we go. So now that lined up with a different set of notches, but just as effective on a smaller one. Now I can't guarantee this will work on every vegetable steamer, but on the ones that I have at home that I picked up at our thrift store, they work on the, all the different sizes quite well. Okay, so that's how I'm going to set it up to make my lunch today. So why don't we do that? I'll get a fire going in the larger of the two vegetable steamers and I'll put some lunch on. Man, it is cold on the hands. I keep switching back from my insulated work gloves to my little fingerless gloves so I can get some dexterity for doing work. But uh, holy smokes, it is cold to work on. So um, I'm setting up on the forest floor here and I don't have a good fire safe surface. Uh, the ground is frozen so uh, I'm not too concerned about it but just to add a little protection I'm again using one of those little barbecue sheets to protect the forest floor. Uh, by the way I, I uh, used one of these in a recent video and people have asked and suggested all kinds of things like pie plates and everything else. Yes I agree a piece of pie plate, a piece of flashing, a piece of aluminum foil all kinds of things would work well. This is just something I wanted to try uh, because it's very lightweight, very compact, and see if it would work out for this type of thing. It works out for some stoves better than others. The one that I had used it with originally was the, the big colander, the big strainer. And what I discovered when I was all finished using it that day is that uh, quite, it hadn't burnt out or burnt through but quite a bit of heat did transfer down through it. So it did kind of scorch the earth underneath. Now, once again, I was in a swamp on wet ground, so it wasn't like there was a, a fire risk or anything. So what I uh, discovered from that is you have to have some distance between the bottom of your stove and this in order for this to work at its best. That The way that strainer was, it focused the heat down onto the earth. So uh, this works much better with this in this combination. So that's what we're going to do today. Now, to make it a little easier on myself, put some glasses on so I can see what I'm doing. I'm going to do a little bit of a preload into the stove itself before I put the crossbars on. So again with the birch bark, because we have it and it works. This is old dried birch bark right off the forest floor here. Still works, doesn't matter, still works. That's enough. I'm going to preload with some little bits of fuel here, just these are also right off the forest floor, just little sticks. So I'll get a little bit of a preload of these small sticks, a little bit of spruce, a little bit of likely maple, it's hard to tell. Sticks on the ground here maple trees around me so that's makes sense that these are likely maple. So this is going to be a combination top down bottom up type of a burn and it's not a matter of which one is better it's just which one is easier today because I can uh, get the preload started get the burrs on top like this again line them up with the right set of notches And that's the reason why I'm doing it this way is it takes a little bit just to line up, make sure you're in the right notches. It's not something you want to do while the fire has started in the stove. Is that going to support my weight? Yeah, very good. So I've got a pot here. This has appeared quite a bit. It's from another Value Village fine, thrift store fine. So that'll work on top. Put that out of the way for a second. Make sure I'm as level as I can. And I have my fuel all ready to go here. Have you seen these? SOL, Survive Outdoors Longer. These are is a plasma lighter. 
So you recharge it. It has a little flashlight in the bottom, but that's secondary. Uh, you recharge it with a USB cable, and it has four points of contact right in the center. <sighs> little dirt on them because I've been using it. And it creates an arcing spark across the top of the things. Now, this is by no means a review. By the way, this was a birthday gift. Uh, so it's not something that was sent to me for testing and review, but as a birthday gift, I thought this will be fun if it works. So I really wanted to use it in cold weather. Uh, so far, so good. You can see how quickly it lights up the birch bark. I say so far, so good. It hasn't uh, really been exposed to real cold weather yet. I think they say you can start 50 or some odd fires with it before you need to recharge it. But there's no fuel leaking out. There's no, uh, you know, you're not going to run out of fuel. And I do carry a power bank. I mean, it, it, I wouldn't consider it my primary fire starter, but it, it makes fire starting quite easy. Come on, don't go out. I think I better add one more little piece of birch bark there. Maybe I can get this started from going from two sides at the same time. That should help. Yeah, so it, it's so far, I can't say too much about it. It's not an endorsement or anything else for that uh, plasma lighter. What do they call it? A fuel-free lighter? It's not an endorsement, but it's uh, something to that I will eventually give it a, a review of some type. A little slow starting here. Not an issue. It will catch up in a second. As you can see, it's starting to do now. I'll wait another minute for it before I put my pot on. If you haven't tried one of these vegetable steamers as a stove, then uh, go and pick one up. I mean, even if you have to buy one at full retail, you're not going to spend very much money. But I see these all the time in the thrift store. And, uh, you know, it's really fun to use. There's so much airflow, but the holes are not so big that there's too much airflow, is, I guess is the best way to say it. They just seem to work really well. By the way, this is what I had been using, which is just a little trivet that you might put on the counter for a hot pot or something that had been my grill on top of this uh, it still works and uh, but I'm really liking this combination using the seed stove crossbars there you can see it's picking up quickly by the way I'm out well out from underneath my tarp so that's not a concern wow what do you think of that eh so I've used it a few times, and every time I use it, I've been very impressed with it. Very inexpensive, very easy, no special modifications needed. If you have a set of the seed stove crossbars, they work really well. Just add them. Here's something else you can add them to. If you don't, they're worth having because you can improvise a stove out of just about anything. And, uh, you know, it makes for a very effective stove. Okay, now it's going to take a minute for my water to come to a boil. And I'm going to make myself some lunch. I'll enjoy that lunch, and we'll just wrap up with a few more comments. So I just finished enjoying a really quite nice lunch on this cold December day, and I thought I would just close out with a few more comments on the vegetable steamer, seed stove, hybrid. Uh, I want to thank the viewer again who made that suggestion to me. It's just one of those simple ideas that you think to yourself, why didn't I think of that? Maybe I would have eventually, but he thought of it before I did and gave me the idea. So that's the reason I'm here today sharing it with you. And again, I'll be sure to give credit to the viewer who did send me this idea. Um, it is really worth having. If you have the vegetable steamer and you have the seed stove, try putting them together. Different sizes will fit within the different uh, areas on top of the pot stand. It's on there, it's locked on solid, no fear of it closing off. I'll tell you, I'm going to replace that other trivet thing that I've been using on top of that, and this is what I'll be using on top of the vegetable steamer here on in, because it just works so well. Okay, 
So once again, this is what I had said. I really enjoy making videos where people give me ideas that I can then share back with you. Now, there's no guarantee that every idea somebody gives me uh, is going to be become a video someday, but the ones that resonate with me that I think will work well, that I test out and do work well, I'll bring them to you. So if you have ideas like this that you want to share, and maybe you're doing them already, or you're just wondering if they'll work, if I can make them work and they look like something that other people will enjoy doing, I'd be happy not only to give you credit, but just bring them out in video for you to see. Okay, if you have any comment on this video, specifically the vegetable steamer, seed stove, seed stove, vegetable steamer, hybrid, then put those in the comments section below. If you have any other comments, any other suggestions, put those in the comments section below. I will be putting the information where you can purchase the seed stove cross members. And if you look back through my playlist, you'll see where I have used them to create a wood gas stove. I, I used them with the IKEA utensil strainer. And you can see a couple of videos on the vegetable steamer stove. So maybe I'll put a couple of those links in the video description along with the rest of this information. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Get out and explore. Take that path less traveled because it will make all the difference. Bye for now.